I missed you. Hey, so hey. Hi. I miss you too. I am so happy that you had the chance to come on because I know you're busy. <laughs> You're really busy and you're traveling tomorrow, right? I am. I'm traveling to Austin tomorrow to do a show um, with a theater that I've worked for. And right now, since indoor theater is still not happening, they're doing an outdoor series. And so it'll be reminiscent of some of their past work. And so to kind of just bring more community, um, bring the community out and bring arts into the community. Austin's very big about that. So they're going to be doing a spring concert series and they're going to highlight the production crowns for the holidays and for Easter. And so it'll be awesome to get to sing some gospel music. Haven't done it in a while. <laughs> oh, excited. Okay. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Kia is, you're like a unicorn. <laughs> I, I am obsessed Thank with you, you because <laughs> you are beautiful and you have like all these different hairstyles that like no one can pull off you pull off anything you come in one day with like short hair long hair braids and I'm like oh <laughs> like I can't do any of that <laughs> you're amazing <laughs> and you can sing like no one's business you can dance, thank you act um I am obsessed with you so um so yeah I'm so excited to talk to you because I really we've been friends for a long time I've known a lot of the really cool things you've done like yeah. you know you worked with Disney for a long time I'm sure you still probably do and you've done a lot mm -hmm. of their shows um and I love going to Disneyland and see you <laughs> perform and then I know you've done Book of Mormon you've traveled mm -hmm. all over the place and done all these different things and so I but I realized that i don't really fully know I've like doing this podcast I realized mm -hmm. that a lot of my friends that are so interesting and have these amazing stories I actually don't know like you know a lot about them and I realized mm -hmm. I don't really know how you got into this I know you're from Texas um so and, and you're close to your family and so yeah. I just kind of wanted to hear your story and what got you into performing and singing and and everything and how you got to where you are today what brought you to california and so i would just love to hear your story of okay of your life so whatever you want go, to share go. okay and feel free to drop in questions obviously whenever yeah you, you know if you're like the mood have strikes them. okay cool great i'm gonna have, them. I'm gonna have <laughs> i like the dialogue <laughs> um so i like you said i am from texas i'm from fort worth texas uh, which is close to dallas most people like to say dallas fort worth but they're quite different i liken it to if you're familiar with california los angeles anything like that it's like fort worth is to dallas as los angeles is, los angeles is to anaheim Okay. So they're about, yeah, they kind of have that same difference feel and also distance between okay. them. Okay. Like um, an hour, hour. -ish. Right. About an hour. Well, 45 minutes from Fort Worth to Dallas, um, you know, on a good traffic day, but depending on what part of LA you live in, mm -hmm. it's about the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, so I've been singing since, oh, forever. Like, uh, I come from a musical family. My mother plays the organ. My grandmother played the organ. And so I grew up singing in church. And my mom would have my brother, sister, and I all behind her on the piano um, while she would work on the parts. And we would be, like, the soprano, alto, and tenor. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> I know, such, like, Jackson 5 vibes. Uh, and uh, I love it. But I was the one who, like, stuck with it. And I used to do solo gigs and con contests and things when I was very, very young, um, five on up until high school. And then in high school, I did a lot of UIL competitions, which is like a big state thing for um, students here in Texas. It's all of the schools all over the state come together and everyone competes for top vocalist, top drummer, top whatever your category is. And so, um, Years, two years in a row, I think my junior and senior year, I won uh, first chair in city and in district. And then in the state competition, I got a one, which is like the outstanding award oh, and everything. That but, doesn't so. surprise me at all. That doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Wow. And so it was. You, um, you were really into it. Like as a kid, were your siblings really into it or that, did your mom have to kind of force them? 
No, my brother was the athletic one. So he went on to do state competitions and um, got full scholarship for football. And my sister got full scholarship in academics and became a journalist. And so she's yeah. now a journalist and works in Florida. But they, and, didn't, but um, they didn't really like to um, perform the way that you, that you do. No, no, they didn't get the bug. I, I got my first acting job, for first, my first professional acting job when I was 13 my theater arts teacher was like, you look like you might want to do this or you'd be good at it or something. She was like, tell your mom to take you here. And so I went to this place called Stage West and I thought it was like a, we're in Texas. So I thought it was like, um, like a honky tonk, like cowboy <laughs> place. Yeah. And I was going to have on their Stetsons and their boots and they didn't, but it was for a play called um, Joe Turner's Come and Gone. And I won best featured performer like in that show. And so it kind of just took off from there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's amazing. So this was, you knew at a pretty young age that this was your passion. I, I did. I always, there are several pictures of me playing in costumes, making up outfits, making up songs and dances, being obsessed with Annie and Little Shop of Horrors was the musical that I was obsessed with. Oh, yeah. you know and force my sister into it <laughs> <laughs> and we still sing all of the parts and everything today like if I called her right now she would know exactly that which is part amazing to that's how my sister and I are I my sister can sing I can't but we are that way with Phantom of the Opera like oh cool I'm like I'm like I'm one of those people that don't I don't care if I can sing or not or should or shouldn't like I do anyway even if people are like, oh, God, like, shut up. But, like, I still, I still do. And so we'll be just, like, busting it out in the house. That's how we were growing up. And Annie, like, my, my grandma was really into musicals. So oh, cool. any musical, yeah, we were watching it and singing. Nice. And so that's really cool. So, um, so you were 13 when you got your first big thing. And then mm -hmm. and did that, like, go anywhere after that? It kind of... It did. I, from that show, uh, I started doing a lot of straight plays in the area. So I was every other week, like I would be either in Dallas auditioning for something and then doing a show or doing a reading. And then I grew up in it. And then um, I started doing the leads in a lot of the musicals locally. And so that was really cool because I was like, in all the newspapers and everything like that. And it was like, Keaton on Fulton, who's Keaton Fulton? I was like, oh my God, it's so much. It was, it was really cool, but it was like, I, I think I, I had that of like, who, me? Per, you know, okay. <laughs> See, I had the who, me moment. You because this is another reason why I call you a unicorn is that <laughs> usually a woman that is like you beautiful talented successful would be a total bitch and you're not you are thank so you on earth and so today it's like you and I wondered how you were as a kid if you had a lot of friends because you I mean you have a lot of friends now I assume you mm -hmm. did but then being busy like that I mean I, I you know how was your childhood did you have a lot of friends I well I did have a lot of I had friends around but close friends which is still basically the way I am now I have my close circle which is about one or two people I have a my friend that I've been we've been close since 14 mm -hmm. and another friend that's like a brother to me and we've been close since we were about 14 and everything else in between is just kind of you know as you make friends along your journey you kind of keep in touch but like to the core those friends that I've had are now family. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm one of those. It's like, if we're here, then we're here. And, yeah. you know, it's kind of a, a loyalty thing. And so it's like, I'm gonna stick with you. Like, we're That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same. Way. Yeah, best friend. We've been best friends since we were 12. Nice. And that's like, you know, I have like a couple of very tight friends that I talk to on a regular basis. And then everyone else is like, I mean, awesome. Like you and I, I feel like there are friends where you can just not talk for a while and then mm -hmm. you pick up where you left off and, and you know that and like, right. For you when you need them or, well, you know, and vice versa. And, but yeah, like tight friends. Mm -hmm. I've been that way even as a kid too. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. So, so from day one, really, you were like the one who me, like I'm, <laughs> didn't go to your head ever. <laughs> no, I, um, so what's so funny is I actually got yelled at. So I did not, not yelled at, but a little bit like a talking to. So I was singing with this uh, amazing uh, company, Singers of Soul. And so we had been doing gigs at the Soho House. All This was all before the pandemic. And we did the annual, annual Christmas concert. And so I sang um, with Houston version, Joy to the World. And so the song ended. And, you know, everybody, like, you take your bow at the end of it and everything like that. So I finished singing and I just kind of, like, ducked off back to the back, like, behind everybody. <laughs> and then <laughs> Dietrich, Dietrich, I, I remember what you said. So if you see this, he was like, don't ever walk off the stage like that. You take your bow, take your moment. And I still, I think some, somewhere in there, I think maybe it's the church in me. So growing up in church, you know, it's like, oh, it's all from God. It's like, yes, but it also is an honor when you do it, go ahead and accept the, just, you know, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that it's all you and and there was no help about it but just go ahead and you know gracefully take your bath (laughs) yeah no I totally get that I'm still working on it that's amazing though because that says a lot about who you are as a person like you know you're beautiful inside and out so oh thank you appreciate it (laughs) so when did you decide to come out to California Oh, man, California had been in my heart for so many years, but I moved to New York instead. Because oh, right of, out of high school? Out of high school, I, I moved to New York and I went to school there oh, for a little I while. Know? I went to AMDA. American okay. Musical and Dramatic Academy. Of course. I did, not, <laughs> I did not stick with it, though, because I started like booking shows and they were like, hey, so you can't work while you're studying and I was like but aren't I going to school so that I can work and so I was like the rebellious part of me is like okay cool I'm out of here (laughs) (laughs) of course (laughs) so I just went on to like book gigs and and do things because I I was um it was things were kind of steamrolling for me and I was getting the lead in like every show that was kind of coming around and I was having the opportunity to do great works like Aida, um, Once Upon, Once on This Island, Ragtime, which is my favorite. I've been able to play that character twice and would die for Sarah any day if you've ever seen the show. It's I one of those that's, it. oh, you would love it more. Okay. I, I think you'd like it. Yeah, you'd like it. You have to do it again and then invite. Oh, right. <laughs> now that's out there in the universe. Gonna do yeah. it again somewhere yeah. you can see it. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I went there first and then um, I came back. I started working at Zach Theater for years and then I moved to New York again to pursue Broadway and everything like that and just didn't really, it didn't feel the way I thought it was going to feel. You know, it kind of almost never does, but it re- didn't really feel the way I thought it was going to feel. And so then I came back to Texas and reset and then I was like, I'm going to California. Like, I, that's where I want to go. And so I got to California and booked a show the first week that I moved here. Like, I think it, I saw the audition. I went to the audition on a Tuesday. I, yeah, landed in LA on a Sunday, went to the audition on a Tuesday, got the call the next Tuesday and was in it and was like there. What show was it? This was a new work with a theater, with Doma Theater Company. It was Dorian's Descent. And so it was so good, cool to be part of a new work because I'm, getting to meet all these amazing actors, a lot of whom I'm still very close with today. So it was a nice welcome to mm-hmm. LA. Yeah. And they were very caring of us. You know, theater was, is different um, in LA than it is, say, in New York and even in Texas. It's a bit different because it's kind of spread out because everything is about film. Mm-hmm. So to even get to do theater was amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's and you get to sing and no one knew who I was. So they like took a chance on this, <laughs> this new kid. <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the, I mean, because no one knew who you were, I feel like you come in with your looks and talent and your personality and everyone's like, oh my God, like, who is this girl? Like, Hopefully, fingers crossed, it keeps happening. <laughs> <laughs> so you get your first, um, that first 
gig and then did it just keep happening for you when you it were- did it did i remember thinking because a, a friend of mine that was in the show was doing um she didn't seem stressed about like money and worried about things like that and you know i i started working at equinox at the time which i loved because fitness and wellness were was also my other passion Mm -hmm. so I was like okay I get to do both things that I love at the same time however being able to pay for like essentials like food is important too so yeah (laughs) Yeah. a little more change in my pocket would have been great and so I asked my friend she was like oh I work at a theme park and I was like oh okay I don't understand so I was just like man I want to get a job where I can keep my skills up and then you know be able to take care of myself and pay for whatever I need to pay for classes, anything like that, but also help my career. And my agent called and lo and behold, like I booked Disney, maybe I think I auditioned in July and got the call the top of September and Mm -hmm. was like on my way and into the show. And then on like, it, it, everything happened kind of now that I'm talking about it everything happened so fast <laughs> <laughs> I feel it like, like you <laughs> did I feel like since I've known you you're like oh I gotta go like because you know Equinox is really cool about letting you leave for a mm-hmm. certain time to go work and then your job is secure when you come back yeah. and so I remember you gone all the time like I'm going here and we'll get into that too because that's like really really cool <laughs> but when you first got Disney, what was the first, because I know you've done like Lion King, you've done Princess and the Frog, like you've done mm-hmm. so many things. What was your first thing that Disney had you do? Uh, my first thing and my, and my first introduction to any, to that world was um, Princess Tiana. Oh, really? Was, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was, was being her, or was being her bestie. So it was like, I didn't even know that was a thing. And at first I was a little like, theme park or whatever you know as my my mind was no shade to um the other theme parks but they're a little different but disney disney is disney so (laughs) you know me i am a disney fan and i remember you were like you know if you're ever in disney Mm -hmm. i'm just tiana and i'm like (laughs) what (laughs) yes oh my god okay i didn't know that that was your your first, um, yeah, because that's about it, when we met. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was, yeah, it was my first, and it was so brand new and just kind of, but the cast was amazing. Like, all of my um, directors were amazing. Everyone was so caring for me, like, from backstage to back of house to front of house to everybody. I was like, okay, I can do this. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. And, and getting the sing for a long time, and so... They had you do like certain shows uh, for a while there. And mm-hmm. then, and then I know, for, I don't know like how fast this happened, but I remember you being at Disney and doing a few different shows and then you moved to Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> it was all in the span of like a year. Wow. It, it was, it was a year. I and that got, was with Disney. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. It was with Disney. I, um, this is, I, I, I like this story actually. Oh, well, I mean, I, I like all the stories, but, um, not cause I'm in them, but because I like <laughs> I know, I, the story of your life is like, I get it. I get it. Oh, cause when I tell the stories, I, I go back and go, Oh, wow. That was so cool. Cause of course in the middle of it, you're like, Oh my goodness is, I don't think I'm going to survive, but, um, you make it through and then yay we have stories to tell and then we have stories so, <laughs> yes we have I stories. Hear you. but I'd been working there for a little while and I um was kind of in the moment of what's next I'm a, a person who does not like to be stagnant and so I was ready to kind of uh, level up and figure out okay what else could I do either in the company or in LA so I was you know looking for how to progress in my career and the musical director came to me and was like, hey, do you have some time? I want to, do you want to sing this song? Do you want to sing Almost There for us in the studio? We're working on something and it's overseas. It's going to be at one of the other theme parks, but we're working on the demo here. Do you, you know, would you be interested? I was like, of course I'd be interested because I I love to do like in-house recordings. It's one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. And so I was was like, of course I want to do it. He was like, you already know the song. I'm going to send it to you and it'll be great. I was like, okay, cool. You know, an honor to be asked especially because I was the new, um, I was the new T on the block. 
that's what we call ourselves. So it's like, I was the new friend, like on the block. And so to be asked is an honor just anyway, regardless of any circumstances to be asked is an honor. And so I went to the studio and like the head of Disney music worldwide about like all the parks was in the room. I had no idea. And I never usually want to know who's in the room because I just want to go do my job <laughs> and I don't want to have to think about, you know, trying to make a good impression. Right. So my mom always says, just do your best. It doesn't really matter what else is going on or it doesn't matter who's in the room, just do your best. Mm -hmm. And so I always take that with me everywhere I go. So I was like, he was in the room. The creative director was in the room. Um, also the music producer were all like, they were all in the room and I'm, you know, just like, okay, all right, what do, what do you guys want me to sing? I said, well, like, yeah, just sing almost there and just sing it the way you sing it at the park. We want you to do like all of the things that you like to do. Like you don't have to stick to the music. Like you can do runs, you can do whatever you want to do. And so I was like, oh, okay, cool. And they were like, yeah, we want you to kind of create it. Just do whatever you want to do. And I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> cool. So um, like I sang the song and the director was like, oh my gosh, I love you. You're great. You want to come to Hong Kong? And I was like, what? Because I, I still didn't really know what was going on. I was just like, okay, they want me to sing this song in the studio. They're going to take it to Hong Kong. After that, I have nothing to do with anything. And so, you know, I'm just like, I'm a do your part. Don't worry about the rest type of person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, sure. Um, I'd love to. And so when the auditions came around, they, for formality, everybody was like, hey, are you going to come audition? Are you going to audition? Are you going to audition? And so I was like, yeah, sure, I'll audition. They were like, you know, because for formality, like, you know, you have to come in. Like, you're already going, but we just want to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you just like need to show up. Yeah. Right, just go through the steps. And so I did, and they, they booked me. Like, I flew to Hong Kong, and then it, I opened the show. So I was... Um, I, they call it like the media Tiana. So the who's I'm telling all this, all the tea, but uh, <laughs> I love it. So yeah. So my friend was on all of the posters <laughs> and all the billboards in Hong Kong, which is kind of cool. Cause it's like, wow, I'm on like a 50 foot, like digital billboard in Hong Kong's Times Square. And there were three of them. There was three of them. I was like, Oh crap. This is like, <laughs> That's we're like oh crap in the coolest way and it was there it was hong kong's first audition i mean um not audition but it was their first initiation to mm -hmm. tiana mm -hmm. so they had never been introduced to her that's what i was trying to say they'd never been introduced to tiana they she hadn't been in the park she wasn't there for meet and greets or anything like that so it was kind of cool to be one of the first to do that and yeah. to open a brand new show so that's amazing. And they get to sing in another country. Yes. Awesome. How was it moving there and not really knowing, I, I assume you like didn't know the language or anything. Did, was it hard for you to get around or just like, how, how was it just like c picking up and moving to a different country that you've never been to before? I would be so terrified. <laughs> to be honest. I, I was nervous. I think I was nervous ahead of time, but as the, as it got closer, I got more excited okay. to just, yeah, to, to recreate, like, I like being able to kind of clean slate something and to reset something. Cause it's like, okay, you have a, a nice, a new start here with, and, and not that I had anything that I needed to run away from or escape from, but it's just nice to, to see yourself reborn in yeah. a different place, in a different way. Yeah. So, you know, that. it, it kind of helps you on your, on your journey is like, Oh, as, as you're evolving, you now have these other things that are helping encourage you along your journey. Mm -hmm. So it was, to me, it was great. And the company took care of us, you know, housing, room and board travel, all of that was taken care of. And a lot of my castmates were American as well. So, um, and some of them, some were British, some were South African, some were Australian. So we were a hodgepodge of things. I learned some Cantonese, some Tagalog, some Mandarin. So it was awesome. That is amazing. And how yeah. long were you there? I feel like you were there forever. I was there for eight and a half months. And I, it was supposed to be a little bit longer, but um, so, 
some things were going on at home. And so I was at the end of my contract. So I was like, I think I'm just going to go ahead and go and like take care of home. You know, I'm very much a home is home, yeah, you know, type you of are. person. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That is amazing. So yeah. I know you came back and then left short after that, like shortly after that. And moved I did to Australia. I did. Um, and that's when, from what I remember, I don't know if this is right. Book of Mormon. Right. That is right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we got it. You got it. Good job. Okay. <laughs> so how much time it, to me, it felt like, and you were gone again, but how much time? So you came back and then you were, went back to Disneyland, right? Mm -hmm. I did. Working at Equinox and for a little bit, I think I was working at Equinox and I think I shot some films and some, um, other, like, I did some other singing gigs and, you know, in LA, you kind of find all your things and find new people and stuff like that. And, yeah. And I know and, you uh, write your own music too. I remember mm -hmm. you, um, being in the recording studio a lot. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Again, don't know if I'm getting this right, but don't you have okay. a song called Still? I do. Okay, look at, do. look at me. Look at me. Um, so I remember that and, and so I remember you writing a lot and being in the studio a lot and you have beautiful songs that you write yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you do all of that and you're doing studio time and you're working at Equinox and Disneyland and you're just all over the place. In the all back. over. <laughs> and then um and then at some point, I don't know when this was, but I know you did. I saw stuff that you did, uh, Lion King. Mm -hmm. When, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you, God, you're so busy. <laughs> I do it, <laughs> but I am, and it 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 always seems like it all happens at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like for me, when it rains, it pours. Like there will little be literally be nothing going on, and then all of a sudden, there's like a flood. Mm -hmm. And, but luckily I've had enough time to relax so that by the time the flood comes, you know, I was like, okay, I was ready. I was prepared for all of yeah, this, yeah. which is essentially what's happening right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is crazy. So I know. So then you get back and then shortly after that you book, um, book of Mormon and mm -hmm. then you're off to Australia. So how was that? Cause I've always wanted to go to Australia. Always. Australia is beautiful. You should go, 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 go. It looks like all of the pictures you've ever seen, it literally looks like you're standing in the photos. And I, my breath was taken almost every day. And where we, I stayed in Sydney mm -hmm. and just doing the show, meeting the cast, getting to kind of up to up level in that part of my career was great too, because I hadn't, um, I had auditioned for that. You know what? I only auditioned for Book of Mormon that one time, like when I got the, <laughs> this is, this is how things, <laughs> this is, like I have that either like nothing's happening or it happens right then. Mm -hmm. And so I should be used to this by now, but it still takes me aback every time. Like no matter what it is, whether it's a new show, whether it's a singing gig, whether it's a relationship, I'm always like, what? <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> but I auditioned, uh, my agent called me. I had my audition November, I don't really remember, it was the week before Thanksgiving. Okay. And so I had my audition that Thursday, I got a call back on Friday, and they were like, they need to see you on Sunday morning. And so it was literally back to back, like Heck. three days in a row. It was so fast. And then they were like, all right, and now, you know, you just wait. So I was like, well, okay, I've done everything I can do. I drove home for Thanksgiving and something told me like, and actually what is so weird is that something not traumatic, like something upsetting happened. I drove home and I was supposed to drive back and long story short, I didn't end up taking the drive back and I kind of got stranded and had to leave my car in Texas, which is fine because it was with my family. And so when I came back to, you know, kind of get my car and figure out how to settle things out, I was at the auto shop getting my car like checked and inspected and everything so I could drive back and I got the call from my agent that I booked it so it was like it was like and you leave you know February 3rd so and it was Jan it was December 12th so I was like well I'm gonna leave my car here I guess 
yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I guess it was good that I got left in Texas. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was good. Everything <laughs> works out the way it's meant to. Everything always works out. Yeah. As much as we try to fight it, it always exactly. works out. <laughs> exactly. And then later we're like, well, why did I fight that? Like, right, right. Why was I so worried? <laughs> yeah. So how long were you in Australia? Again, I, I was feel like the, we lost you for a long time. For about a year. You know why? Because every time I've left to go overseas, I, I usually don't come right back to L.A. Mm. So I am always gone for about a year's time. So I was in Australia for about eight and a half months. And then when I came back from Australia, I think I flew straight to Texas mm -hmm. and was here for a little while and then drove back to L.A., because my car was still, was still here. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Your family must be so proud of you. I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She loves me. Even, even when I'm still like, mom, can you play this song for me so I can work on this really quick? <laughs> I've met your mom. I don't know if you remember. Uh, we were, I was at a restaurant with friends celebrating my friend's daughter's birthday and your mom was in town. Your family was in yes. town. Yes. You came up and you sang my friend's daughter, happy birthday. Yes. And she's like, oh, she has the most beautiful voice. When you left, everyone was like, oh my gosh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Like you're yeah. Just amazing. Um, so, so I know that like during, okay. So, after Book of Mormon, mm -hmm. that's when I left Equinox around, I think, that time. And so mm -hmm. we, like, talk every now and then, but I don't know really, like, what you've been up to since then. So I know you've been busy. I see all kinds of stuff on social media, and <laughs> you're killing it. But what, what you. happened that I've missed out on? Tell me. Yet. Oh, oh. How, how many years? Well, okay, so 2019? Yeah, I guess well, it's 2019, maybe, yeah. that we're kind of recapping. Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, because I was well, at Equinox in, like, gosh, 2018. Right. And so, and then, yeah, and then the pandemic happened. And so, how has, because obviously, like you said, we're not doing indoor theater right now or anything. And so, how has this affected you um, with your work? Well, to be, I, I, I think because I understood the situation, I didn't get um, to be current in my words. I didn't get like all of my feelings about it because I, I just knew. I was like, well, there's really only so much that we can all do right now. We just have to kind of be, be careful with ourselves, give ourselves grace. Like we can do what we can do right now. We can take the time to think about what we want to happen once mm -hmm. this all kind of transitions into something new or how we want to help recreate this world or make sure that things like this, I won't necessarily say don't happen again, but how we can all be better for each other. And that's what I really um, learned mm -hmm. with all of this, just, you know, how to, how to be closer to each other and be more careful with each other because everyone as far apart as we were, we were all still so close. Mm -hmm. I feel like we all got a little more connected than we ever were before because we had to do Zoom auditions. We had to do Zoom calls, Zoom meetings, FaceTime, like, oh my goodness, you know, it's like when you haven't seen your friends, like, man, I haven't seen you forever. It's just good to see your face. Like, it is good to see your face oh, right now. Thank you, you too. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> and um, so it, it gave me, it gave me the liberty, like, to write and just recreate and do whatever I wanted to do without worrying that I had to produce something or worrying that I had to say, Hey, I'm working on this or anything like that. Cause it's like, at this point, if you're not happy with it, who cares? Because when you're in a pandemic, what really matters kind of comes to light. Mm -hmm. so and true. so, um, yeah, so I, I think we all kind of had that wake up moment. And so I wrote more, um, so many different things. I changed my hair a million times. <laughs> I love it every single time. You know this. You can pull off anything. I have, and have uh, fun. I've never you seen anyone it. that pulls off different hair colors, hairstyles, like more than you. It's like you look good. No, but I'm telling you guys, 
<laughs> uh, she's, anything you do with your hair, I'm like, geez, you look good in that too. Because <laughs> thank you. Say you look bad, no. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. No, I was gonna wear. I was like, I think I want to dye my hair lavender next, and um, so that may be coming soon. So good. I think I could do it. What do you think? Yeah. Think well. It this is my next question though like with your new show because I know you're leaving tomorrow Mm -hmm. you have to have like your hair and everything a certain way or well the thing about this director is is he's not too he's awesome one and um just shout out to this director because when I was a younger performer he really encouraged me on just letting go in performing and he gave me the responsibility to like lead the cast in a lot of shows I played Aida there I played Sarah in Ragtime there Mm -hmm. I like was I was the lead in so many of the shows and so it kind of it encouraged me to keep going even though I'd already been doing it it's one of those like oh wow man this like person who is the artistic director of this amazing theater because that theater is like an Austin staple so it's Zach Theater, anybody watching? Um, <laughs> well, everyone watching. And uh, so it, it's, he's, he just wants everyone to look good. And I like that. <laughs> he's like, I just want you to look good. So we've picked out outfits and clothes and everything like that over back and forth over Messenger. And um, it doesn't really matter. He's like, you're going to be wearing your hat because um, we wear church hats in this oh, show. Okay. So he's like, however you want to wear your hair, I'm fine with it. Amazing. As long as you feel good. good <laughs> yeah. for you. I know, because yeah. you love to, like, change it up all the time. And I'm like, well, mm-hmm. I wonder if there's ever, like, I mean, I'm sure, like, shows where you can't and you have to, like, oh, for sure. a certain way. But for sure. Oh, so. Um, so you've written um, a bunch of cool stuff during COVID. Mm-hmm. And I have. The rest of it, it sounds like, and spending a lot of time with family. I know you did a road trip and everything. Mm-hmm. And you've been having fun. I have. I feel like I've been on a road trip every other weekend since December started somewhere. I was just like, I need to travel because traveling is so important. It kind of rejuvenates my creative juices and everything. So it started in Austin and then we ended up in California Mm -hmm. some kind of way. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. I love that. Yeah, it was super Uh, cool. Yeah. Um, I was going to say when you were talking about, this is like going back, but when you were talking about auditioning and how you don't like to know who's in the room, Mm -hmm. so funny because one of the things I've kind of picked up from personal training is I've had the opportunity to train some pretty successful people in the industry behind me. And so I remember auditioning. I thought when I was 18 that I wanted to be an actress and I went on an audition and I froze. It was the only thing I've ever done. Like the only audition I've ever done. Um, Mm -hmm. And it was for Disney channel. Really? Yeah. And I went in and I just froze and, and it was just me in a, in a room of of like, I don't know, maybe four people in there. Mm -hmm. And I was 18 and never done anything before. And it was like a cold read and I just froze and then they like gave me a second try and I couldn't do it. And I was like, sorry. And I just like ran out and I was like so intimidated by these people. And I thought I could never do this now with training and like kind of seeing them where like, I'm obviously not trying to impress them or, you know, whatever. And so I see who they are. And that they're uh-huh. just normal people and their lives are a mess usually. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, well, you're, why are people so intimidated by you? Like, you know, right. I just started to see them from a different. And so before COVID, um, you know, uh, we were pitching a couple of TV shows that I mm-hmm. created with my, with Ben, um, the producer of this podcast. And I just, when we would pitch, I would go in like, I think the only one not really nervous. Cause I'm like, well, this guy's just like everybody else. Like I train people probably more successful than him. And so <laughs> I'm just like, you know, there's nothing to be nervous about. And I, like he was saying, well, I love this to this and that, but I don't know about this. And, and mm-hmm. everyone in the room was like, we could change that. And I'm like, ah, uh, I don't know if I want to change that. And I'm like, right. Back. 
and uh, everyone was like so intimidated and I'm like that has helped me so next time if that helps you to just to just realize that they are just everyday normal people and like oh yeah I just like don't get nervous when I like go into to pay right. to talk to them or anything and I think tra- personal training has helped me with that so much to just like no no different than me so right and and that's that's one of the things I because I sang in church for such a long time I um I think that's why I, I no shade to the people in the room but I've never really cared who was in the room because I still have my job to do so it's like it doesn't matter to me who you are whether you're the person behind the camera or the person who's like going to be sweeping up or or bringing the water or anything like that like I'm not going to sing better or worse right. based on who's in the room so I would rather not even know because it's a non-factor yeah, and that's kind of that's, that's usually where I start yeah I, I just usually kind of start from there so it's like well if I'm here then okay let me just go in and make sure I show up um, instead of, because a lot of times bef- in the auditions, before you go in, they will tell you like, Hey, this person is in the room. This person's in the room. And a lot of people are like, Oh my God, this person's there. Like they're sitting outside and they're getting nervous. And I'm like, don't psych yourself out. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Sing like no one's watching. Sing mm-hmm. like your mom is in there. Sing like your mom's not in there. Just don't, it doesn't matter yeah. because they're not looking for that anyway. That's a great outlook. That's great. Yeah, uh, they they just they just kind of want you to be yourself. That's awesome. Yeah, oh, I love that. <laughs> um, so now I do want to get into. Uh, okay. I want to get into dating. Oh yeah. <laughs> you are super busy. You're traveling a lot. Mm-hmm. I know you meet a lot of people, um, and probably because you're an artist and you're working with other artists that we're all passionate people. And so I very. Like you connect with people um, very easily. And so do you find it easier to date or harder to date or how is your, how have your relationships been? Um, for the most part, I, I have been single for single for about six years at this point, I believe six years. And just because uh, working with career and stuff so much and you and, and the other person are, are in different places and not that it's a, has been an issue for me necessarily because I'm like, well, phones exist. It doesn't, it doesn't really bother me to, to have to pick up the phone. But um, what I find is that when you're kind of not around, it, it makes the relationship harder for some, for you know the person you want to connect with. And so it's like, well, I want everyone, you know, it's like if it has to feel forced or if it has to feel like a second job and that's something that's not really the priority right now, then that's okay. It'll come when it's supposed to come. But connecting has never necessarily been difficult. Maintaining the the connection is the part that kind of gets a little trying after a while. And so where you're just like, okay, maybe this is just not what it's supposed to be right now. And that's okay too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like this is not forcing. That's okay too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, I just find that like, you know, working a lot. I especially before the pandemic, mm-hmm. personally, like I'm just like always on the go and working on mm-hmm. projects. And um, like you said, it's it's never hard for me to have a connection with somebody. But I don't know if you because you're so artistic you're into I'm assuming like other artists that are mm. passionate about and um and someone that you know that you can like create with I think that's important in a relationship I am that yeah. way even though I'm not really in front of the camera a whole lot I mm-hmm. love to create like I you know I'm creating a clothing line that I just started I'm creating you know I did this podcast and these nice. shows that that I want that I don't necessarily want to like star in but like I am a creative person and, mm-hmm. and I'm attracted to creative people um that are doing what they love and and mm-hmm. you know are good at it but I don't know if you run into this but what I have discovered lately <laughs> is they typically 
like the the men that I've had relationships with that are that way are narcissistic. Like they're oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, <laughs> so I've run into this issue of like being uh, attracted. Maybe the last six years of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's tough because it's like I don't want to. I'm never gonna settle. I'm never gonna like get married to get married or have kids to have kids like right fine with who I am Mm -hmm. I know that you feel the same way like we're happy with our lives of course we want love but if Mm -hmm. if it's meant to be like it'll come we believe God has a plan and and Mm -hmm. so but with relationships yeah I'm just finding that I'm like wow I how do I get kind of that good mix of someone who is creative that I can create with and who is like you know successful in what and what they do and do what they're passionate about and didn't just kind of settle for something because they make a money at but actually doing something they love I think is important to me and but then without the narcissistic part that comes with right it, so right. hard in this it, town it is it is but they're out there for sure I've definitely I've met a few um, very great, great men who are, are in touch with their spirituality. Cause that's, a, it's important to me mm-hmm. and who have that, that grounding in themselves of just being like, you know, I, I understand the places where I need to work and need to grow. And if we can create together. And I think that was the thing that kind of, um, that I had to let go of, of, wanting someone that I could create with. I had to kind of let go of that. I still want it. And I'm still very much into creatives. You know, I I don't think I'm ever going to be the actor who says I'm never going to date an actor or I'm never going to date a musician or anything like that. Um, You know, I've dated plenty of both and they've all been great. And so now I just kind of get to the point of, okay, so what do I feel like, not necessarily is the deal breaker, but what is most important to me? Is it most important that we can create together? Or is it most important that we're growing together on this journey? And so now that I'm looking at it from that different standpoint, I'm still um, coming in contact with a lot of creatives, but we're starting at a different place. Like we're looking at each other from a different place and very, very like ridiculously talented creatives. Like I, you know, I, I, and just even friends of mine, like, I feel like everyone I know, I'm like, man, I have, I know some really dope people, like you included, obviously. (laughs) I'm like, man, I'm so blessed. I know some really dope people. So even if I don't get to create with my partner, Mm -hmm. I know there's going to be some type of creation, even if we're creating a better life. Right. with each other like we're encouraging a better life so it's like okay that's that's a part of a creation or if we do have children together okay that's right. a creation but right. and if the person is a musician I mean my I one of the things that I imagine happening is like a song or something like that or any, you know one mm-hmm. of those cool things it's like but I don't want that to be not I don't want that to be but if it if it happens yay yeah. and if it doesn't then I'm okay with that too. I don't want to like force, because before I think when I was a little uh, younger, I would try to, I would want to kind of force that and then miss all the other stuff and then like end up in Mm -hmm. a narcissist field. (laughs) Yeah. Oh goodness. It's like, oh my God, he's so talented and he's so cute. And oh my goodness. But it's like, charming and so So all the things. All the things. All the things. All the things. (laughs) (laughs) I hear you. It is like now I feel like I've gotten to the point where I'm pretty good at I mean with narcissists it's really hard, but but I get mm-hmm. I'm at the point where I can kind of see it, the red flags mm-hmm. in the beginning. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Okay, no. But like now it's about getting you know, I just started dating again mm-hmm. and um and met some really, you know, great, I mean, like, most it's, like, you know, Zoom, yeah. you know, like, hey, how's it going, you know, but, and, and most of it's, like, one, in, one conversation and done, but, um, and, and I've met, like, a lot of cool guys, a lot of great, like, down-to-earth guys, but, like, yeah. 
I, I, there's something in me, I think, that, like, I love the, um, the guy that, like, does what they're passionate about. Right, and, right. But, but it's so, like I said, it's so hard to find someone that has that and is spiritual Mm-hmm. like you know we're on the same page with everything it's so hard to find like that whole package and so I you know I'm just like you know I've gotten to the point where if, like if it happens it happens but I do get a little bit of pressure from my family family oh yeah I don't, I don't know if you get that but I, um, after a while my fa- my family just like left me alone and um <laughs> I think they were just like he is not the one that we can like mess with about that because she my dad um is a few months ago he was like you know I'm very proud of you and I was like and I was waiting for him to say it but I guess he was waiting for me to say oh dad why are you proud of me (laughs) my dad is a funny character if you ever get to meet him (laughs) and anyone who knows my dad is already like she's not lying he's an interesting person um well, I was like, why are you proud of me? He was like, well, because you were never so concerned with being in a relationship. You kind of kept your eye on the prize of what it is that you wanted. And because for sure, I definitely got, I don't, I don't want to be so dramatic, but like sucked into relationships that kind of a little bit took me off my path. But I, I at the same time, it was what was needed for my growth. So it's like, well, I learned what I was supposed to learn and yeah, and everything always works out. So, um, but the, yeah, they, they don't bother me too much about it. They, um, especially because I've never been a person to like have a bunch of boyfriends. So mm-hmm. like if, if they meet one person, they're like, oh my God, who's, who's that? He must be the one. And I'm like, no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> like, he's my not. mom is all about that. <laughs> I get it. Like no one really bothers me too much about, you know, cause they, kind of the same like eh, I'm yeah. gonna do it you know because I'm just not gonna settle yeah. right my right mom no is settling. someone who like never and like my grandpa who just passed away from COVID mm. a couple months ago he oh he hi. used to tell me thank you he used to tell me all the time I I wish you would get married before I die he would always say that and then towards the end of his life he would say eh, you're fine you're gonna be fine on your own and I'm like <laughs> okay like <laughs> yes, I'm glad grandpa. you feel that way and he's like you're independent I'm not worried about you and like he you know um but my mom everything like I'm like oh yeah I got a dog and she's like oh maybe you'll meet the one at a dog park and I'm like this isn't about a man this is just me having a dog because I've been wanting one and by the right. way congratulations you're in oh thank you are being the same age yes our babies are your baby is a lot bigger than mine she's a bit bigger she's getting (laughs) so big (laughs) oh but of course you know as she's a german shepherd so and as german shepherds get bigger they don't realize that they've grown so she's still (laughs) right she still thinks she's a lap dog i'm like oh my goodness girl you're gonna knock me over so (laughs) i love german shepherds if i had a bigger place and a bigger yard Mm -hmm. i would have one too they're the best yeah, I always wanted a big dog though, so oh. I'm I'm excited about her. Good, yeah. congratulations. Yeah, um, but well, yes. good for you not settling. Thank I wanted you. to say that. Well, good yeah. for you too. Good Thank for you, you too. Oh, I've I always think- had that that independent streak. I feel like that kind of I don't know. I'm you know I've been told that that kind of steers people away. I'm like, what? Because I'm self sufficient? That's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> I have been told that too because yeah. Um, because you know like you I've been I've been on my own since I was 17 and Mm -hmm. so I was kind of forced to be independent and now I've Mm -hmm. been independent for so long and taking care of myself and Mm -hmm. I have been told that too like you're almost too independent where men kind of still want to be a man and like take care of you and I'm like nope (laughs) like no I'm good I care of myself and like it's yeah it's about like finding but but how do you feel though like do you still this is this is an old school term um but do you still like to be courted because I do Mm -hmm. no I do I I I do I do love it um my last I haven't seen it in a while but I do like it (laughs) my last my my last boyfriend we met during the pandemic we're together for like Mm -hmm. seven and a half months um and he was amazing at courting me 
Oh, uh, sweet. Good Christian man. We were long distance. He was in Fresno. That's why it didn't work out. Other than that, like we have love for each other. It was a very sad breakup because we neither one of us wanted it to end. We just knew, um, you know, he originally, when we got into the relationship, said that he was going to move here if it got serious. I told him from day one I was not going to move to Fresno. Um, mm-hmm. And then when it came down to it, seven and a half months later, and we're talking about marriage, he realized, like, I know I said that. I mean, it was becoming reality. It's like, I know I said right. that I this, but I can't. I can't leave my family and my career. And so we just had to end it. Um, but, mm-hmm. but I will say, like, he was the first one in a long time to – court me you know before that I was in a relationship with an actor who had a daughter full-time and uh, Mm -hmm. he didn't really I remember him yeah he didn't really like have a a, you know like he didn't really court me like he right 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 full-time and we never date I mean I could count how many dates we went out on and Mm -hmm. you know everything was centered around his little girl and which I love her and so that was fine but I didn't really we didn't really date. And with, yeah. and with uh, my ex, he was able to like come here and just, I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic and he would think of the most creative dates. He took me on a gondola ride in Long Beach that he found oh, that's sweet. Time, like, from here. And it was for mm-hmm. the fly and the fireworks are going off and <gasps> it was a full moon and it was like- It's Little Mermaid. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Little Mermaid. It, it was amazing. And I'm like, this is amazing. And he like came up with the most beautiful creative days and never let me pay for anything. And like, I, oh, it was like, you know, I allowed him to do it all and I loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, it felt really good. And actually he set the bar really high. Cause after, you know, you date these guys in LA that give you the bare minimum and you think, well, this oh. is the best it's going to get. And he just yeah. so high that uh you know it's like yeah now I know like that I love to be courted I love Mm -hmm. I'm I'm finally okay with like I don't have to have it together all the time I don't have right I don't have to you know like I can allow a guy in and run the show I don't have to show all the time and so I do like being courted and I am ready for someone to come in and go yeah I'll take care of you a little bit I just I love my independence too though and I think Mm -hmm. it needs to be like a a balance the balance yeah yeah for sure for sure Mm -hmm. um definitely about like finding the balance the finding the work life social life romantic life balance and um Mm -hmm. because I've dated uh a little bit since kind of the pandemic or whatever and and there was like a guy who's like courting me or whatever and I was like oh is that what that looks like now okay cool (laughs) now was this guy in Texas or was he in California Ooh, well he travels so (laughs) I was gonna say because I find like I which is great from LA that is great yeah yeah I'm like I had the first guy the good first like good guy I've had in a while was from is not from LA so I'm like oh Oh, Maybe so where is he originally trick. from? Hey, yeah. Originally, he is from Texas. Okay. Well, that's originally, he's from Texas. Know. Yeah. 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 Amazing. <laughs> that's a little bit of Southern charm. I appreciate yes, that. Yes, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, my my ex from Fresno, his family is from Oklahoma, and my mom's side of the family is from Oklahoma, and so it's kind of that same, like, just, like, you know, Southern charm. I think he just, you know, was raised right. Oh, that's okay. So you do have a Southern background. Mm-hmm. Okay. I always thought those vibes from you, but I could never, I was like, oh, she's really? a Catholic girl. Yeah. I always <laughs> kind of got like <laughs> yeah, Southern my, sister vibes. Yeah. My mom uh, and the family moved here when she was 13, but I still mm-hmm. have a ton of family that lives in Oklahoma. And every cool. time they come visit, I feel like I get an accent for some reason. And like, everyone, all of my family start talking different. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Start saying y'all. Yeah. Y'all. And uh, <laughs> y'all. my mom still, after all these years, says words that we make fun of her for. Because she'll say like, Winda and Warsh oh. and restaurant. And- ah! Yeah. She says all that. <laughs> 
<laughs> potato. <laughs> yeah, potato. she has those words. And so we like, you know, laugh about it. Um, so I am very excited to see everything that you do because Thank I know you. you're just going to continue to to grow and grow and grow. Is there Thank any, you. like, is there any desire to do like a full like album on your own? Oh, definitely. Um, uh, always. That's, that's a passion. I, I have so many songs, but, and well, not, but, and working with new producers is, is the thing. So it's working with somebody and finding that vibe and not necessarily feeling like I have to be bound to a specific genre or sound. Mm -hmm. And I think kind of that gets, um, for me, it was a thing for a while of like, oh, I, I don't want it to sound like this or I don't want it to be categorized as this. And now I'm just like, I just want the baby to come out. However mm -hmm. it comes out, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. So I just need to let, yes. it, let it be. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So do you, what, do you have like this end goal in sight or are you kind of just go with the flow like as far as um, theater and album? And do you have like this picture of like what like an end goal or are you just kind of go in I mean I go with what happens I do have things that I want to accomplish and things that I want to see happen and those have been happening and you know um but at the end of the day it's like a beautiful life and did I enjoy it yeah. that's kind of where I am and I I and I took that practice from uh <laughs> from eating cheat food as uh, -huh. uh <laughs> as us healthy fit people would like to call it yeah and it's like yeah okay if you ate the french fries if you ate the pizza and it's not necessarily on your diet don't punish yourself while you're eating it one because then you're just gonna have feel like you have to do it again sooner than later but in the meantime did you enjoy it exactly. that's kind of really all that matters as long as you're enjoying it now then you won't necessarily need to repeat <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So yeah. I, before we go, okay, would love, if you're up to it, okay, to hear something. Like okay. a, a Disney song or, you know, I'm a Disney girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Are, are you up for it? I'm up for it. For I haven't well. heard your, thank you. I haven't heard your voice in a very long time, so I'm excited. Thank you. Okay. This is also, because congratulations on your podcast. Thank you. And like bringing all of your dreams and wishes to life and carrying on. I'm always so proud to see like everything that you're doing. I know she has a producer and now that you told me you're like going to have a clothing line and just everything. I'm like, I know her. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and we also have coffee and a hike that we have to have. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah. And we have to, yeah. She, Faith just got her last vaccine today. Okay. So we are, I'm good to go. We could bring our dogs and we can go on a hike and, and get some coffee. Right. Right. I'm like, maybe we can get sugary coffee and then go on the <laughs> Yes. No oh, coffee. First, then we can burn sure. it off. Coffee right. first and deering. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. I'm done with that. Okay. Let me get myself here. All right. This for you. A dream is a wish your heart makes. When you're fast asleep and dreams you will lose your heartache, whatever you wish for, you keep. Have faith in your dreams and someday. A rainbow will come smiling through, no matter how your heart is grieving, if you keep on believing the dreams that you wish will come true. Woo! So thank you so much. That was beautiful. 
you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God, I miss you so much. Thank you. I miss you too, Morgan. Oh, beautiful. I'm so happy to know you. I can't Thank even you. tell you. I like. <laughs> You're just a unicorn. That's what I love. <laughs> like my, my heart was pounding. I was like, oh, I'm singing to my, my friends. Oh, thank you so much. I will treasure that forever. <laughs> okay. Thank um, you. <laughs> uh, yeah. As soon as you get back into town, okay. we're going on a coffee hike date. Yes. Yes. I need Good. that coffee. We're going to need that. <laughs> Good luck. And I guess they say break a leg on your new show. Thank you. <laughs> and I will be seeing you soon, my friend. Thank you. You too, love. Love you. Bye. Bye.